want to talk about in this video today are some of the bad money habits that will keep you stuck in the rat race. That's stuck in a job you hate, doing things you don't want to do, missing out on the things that you do want to do and not getting to spend time with your loved ones. I've spent my whole career working in finance, first as an accountant and then as an investment analyst. And what I really wanted to do was take some of the lessons that I'd learned when I was investing other people's money and apply them to my own finances. Having expensive habits. You know, this is something that you kind of read about in The Millionaire Next Door. You know, the idea that most people who are millionaires don't fly around on private jets, they don't have a Rolls Royce on the driveway, they're just kind of regular people who have invested little and often over a long enough period of time and they've consistently lived below their means. Now, I just want to make one thing like absolutely clear. I'm not necessarily scolding people for having hobbies or for spending money on things that they enjoy, like not at all. I think the key thing is if you can derive kind of 80% of the enjoyment without spending 100% of the money, then I think that's really where you want to be. Do you need to get a new set of golf clubs every single year or actually can you just use your golf clubs from your previous year and it doesn't necessarily diminish the overall value that you get from a hobby. And I think the thing is the expense and the cost in my view is not necessarily directly correlated with the overall benefit and the overall value and joy that you would get from your hobbies. I don't want this to sound too finger wavy at people, but I think, and you know, I'm not picking on golfers here in particular. Oh, but fucking boring. But I think one of the problems with expensive hobbies is that you get sort of hooked into this consistent cycle of spending money. It's a new set of golf clubs every year. It's golf membership fees every year. It's just about finding the balance, you know, evaluating these spending decisions and how they fit into your longer term financial plan. Ignoring your financial literacy. In my view, the key thing about financial literacy is not necessarily, you know, being up to date on the tax code or understanding this, that and the other and understanding what APR means. You know, that's all stuff that's by the by. For me, the key thing is understanding something like opportunity cost. You have your money coming in. You can only spend the money once. So how best to spend it? And I think once you get to a point where you really understand why you're making financial decisions, why you're spending money on this particular thing over that particular thing, that for me is the key to finan financial literacy. And then once you've got that bit sort of under wraps, you know, the importance of a budget, living below your means, all those sorts of things, you can start to understand how all these little pieces will fit into a much broader financial plan, a much broader economic strategy. Overpaying on your mortgage might be a piece, an important piece, but a piece nonetheless of your journey to financial freedom. Investing is another very important piece, but it is only a piece. Living below your means is another piece. And so what you'll start to see as you gradually educate yourself and as you expand your financial horizons is that all this starts to form part of a much more comprehensive and a much more cohesive plan to get you towards financial freedom. One of the things I talk about a lot on this channel are sort of the core tenets of financial literacy. And I would always put living below your means is a core tenant of financial literacy. Having a budget, again, is another core tenant of financial literacy in my view, because they are sort of the building blocks that you can use to build on. Keeping it up with your friends. This one's kind of always puzzled me. It's hard to keep up with them. I've never understood why if one of your friends has some degree of success and they decide to show it to the world by buying a new car or living in a big house or whatever it, the case may be, that you would want to try and replicate that or you would want to try and match their success. Because the truth is that you don't know what goes on behind closed doors or what people's personal circumstances are. We all see people flying to Dubai and blah, 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 all that sort of thing. But what you may not necessarily see is the mountains of credit card debt they're drowning under. They might have parents footing the bill for some of this stuff. They live in a big house because their parents gave them a deposit. And so the key thing for me has always been focusing on your own financial goals, focusing on your own financial journey, because it can just be a distraction to be looking at what other people are doing. And as we've sort of alluded to earlier on in the video, it's not necessarily the case that focusing on those sorts of things is gonna make you better off really. If one of your friends gets a new BMW, you don't necessarily have to, that can just be their thing. In my view, good friends will understand that. They'll understand that they've got their moment in the sun and then hopefully when you have yours, they'll be able to back you up. They'll be able to praise you for it. Buy now, pay later. One of the other core tenants that I talk a lot about is delayed gratification. You know, you don't necessarily have to have the thing all the time, you know, whether it's new iPhone, new laptop, blah, 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 blah. Companies like Klarna and some of these other lending agencies are hoping, they have got their fingers crossed that you look at something colorful and you go, oh, I'll have that, oh, I don't have the money, I'll pay for it later. What you find with these credit agreements is, you know, the rates on them, particularly in a generally higher interest rate environment, can be absolutely astronomical. And you end up, end up paying well over and above the asking price or well over and above the list price of whatever it is that you've decided to finance. Understanding that 
when you're in your 20s and 30s, making purchases like that has got a huge opportunity cost over money that you could have invested elsewhere. Spending money before you have it. Now, again, this is one that which I've never really understood is, you know, your boss says, hey, you know, you're going to get a raise at the end of the year. Maybe they don't tell you how much it is, maybe they do, and then you go out and spend that money before it's even hit your account. I spent that money! That's just nuts. For starters, if you've got a bonus, if you've got a pay increase, you want to avoid lifestyle creep. But I think also spending money before it's even in your pocket is is just, it's so rarely wise. Don't forget you have to pay tax on it. If it's a bonus, then you might get taxed a bit more heavily. You've got student loan deductions. So just wait for it to hit your bank account because it will probably be less than you imagine. Thanks very much for watching. This has been another video from Modern Money Talk where we talk all things personal finance and personal development related. If you've enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. You know where the buttons are. And comment down below. What are some of the you know traps from the rat race that you think we've missed out? And don't forget to follow us on Instagram. Peace out.